Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at another really important building block certainly for circuits that involve um, uh, radio and that's the tune circuit and we're going to like take a look at the two variations of that. So let's start by looking at some of the theory. Tune circuits then come in two forms um, very easy to recognize series tune circuit exactly as you might expect capacitor and a coil uh, connected in series and the parallel tune circuit again exactly what it says on the tin capacitor and coil connected this time in parallel now both circuits have some similarities but they also have some significant differences and that's what I want to um, look into a little bit today in a practical sense so they both have something called the resonant frequency which um, without going into extremely complex technical um, description essentially is the sweet spot at which uh, the phase angle is zero and depending on the circuit configuration it will either enhance or attenuate the signal and to calculate the resonant frequency is pretty straightforward um, the frequency given in Hertz is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times the square root of the value of the inductor and the capacitor uh, multiplied together and uh, those values must be in henry's and farads and it gives us the uh, frequency in hertz okay i've got a hundred nanofarad capacitor and i've got a 23 micro henry inductor i'm going to use for these um, little experiments uh, choice of those two is fairly arbitrary i happen to have them to hand but it does give us um a useful frequency around 100 kilohertz which allows me to um, to get a, a more accurate calculation so I measured the capacitor using my LCR meter and it came out at 100.909 nanofarads uh, that's an average um, of measurements sort of visible on the bottom line there and I did these tests at a test frequency of 100 kilohertz and uh, this will make a little bit more sense in a moment or two the inductor came out at 22.425 microhenries. Again, that's an average on the bottom line there on the display. And again, that measurement was taken at 200 kilohertz. So plugging those two numbers into the equation, first thing we need to do is convert them to farads and henries. So um, 100.09 times 10 to the minus 9 farads and 22.425 times 10 to the minus 6 henries gives us the numbers we need to put into the equation and when we put those numbers into that equation taking pi as 22 divided by 7 we get a frequency of 106.219 kilohertz as the expected resonant frequency so let's go and have a look on the bench starting first of all with a series tuned circuit here's the tuned circuit built on the breadboard then just uh, quite simply a capacitor and inductor um, Currently I've got them configured in series tune circuit mode and I'm feeding uh, into the top and bottom of the tune circuit a signal currently at about 92 kilohertz and I've got the scope attached um, again to the top and bottom of the tune circuit and I'm just looking at the output it says here about it's 92 kilohertz and I'm producing this uh, uh, sine wave. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to just change the time base so we've got a, a signal that's a bit easier to see the amplitude of um, the subtleties and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance the frequency in one kilohertz steps that's 95 96 and as you can see we are amplitude is getting less and less as the signal frequency increases that's 105 kilohertz and now we're at 110 kilohertz and you can see the signal is getting larger again if I just keep on going until it's almost filled the screen there that's about 122 kilohertz so let's go back then to the opposite end again so we're going from about 93 there and eventually we reach a point where the signal pretty much zeroes out and that's 106 kilohertz so if you remember the 
calculation. Uh, the reason I've managed to get so close with the theoretical calculation of course is because I measured quite precisely the value of the coil and the inductor. If I'd just taken their um, specified values from manufacturing I'd have got a, a slightly different result, only a few hundred hertz difference, but I would have got a different result. So uh, what, what we can say then about a series tuned circuit is that at resonance uh, the amplitude drops right down um, and it appears I guess to the signal almost like a short circuit I guess that'd be another way to, to think of it so a series tuned circuit at resonance produces um, a short circuit whereas either side of it whether it be above sorry below or above um, again it starts to get much bigger and if I now um, change over to 10 kilohertz I'm going to just go down on time by on amplitude there so you can see if I now go up in 10 kilohertz steps you can see the amp we're at 200 kilohertz there and you can see the amplitude is a great deal higher so as we come back now 110 100 so we're going either side of it there's that very obvious null um, that we can see there okay let's now have a look at um at a series sorry at a parallel tune circuit Okay, I've reconfigured the coil and capacitor on the uh, breadboard, so we've now got a parallel tuned circuit, quite simply coil and capacitor in parallel, and I've got signal generator and scope attached again to the top and bottom of that circuit. So here we are with a 93 kilohertz signal being fed in, and I've, um, it, it is a sine wave as you can see there, but just so we can see the amplitude better, I've just uh, change the time base a little. So now I'm going to increase the frequency in one kilohertz steps. We know from our calculations we're expecting resonance to be uh, at about 106 kilohertz. So as I increase the frequency that's 100 kilohertz and you can see the amplitude is getting larger. So that's 100 and 106 kilohertz there. Yep, 106 kilohertz, and if I start to increase it, you can see the amplitude is reducing. So if I do the same as I did before, I'm just going to drop that down a little. I'm going to change instead of one kilohertz steps, I'm going to go in 10 kilohertz steps now. So that's that's 150 kilohertz, and you can see it getting lower and lower as we come back down. 120, 110, 100 kilohertz. 90, 80, 70, 60. So we've got exactly the opposite uh, going on with the parallel tune circuit that we had with the series tune circuit in that what we appear to be seeing here measuring the voltage on the scope is that at resonance uh, it appears to be effectively presenting um, uh, an open circuit so to speak. So the um, uh, frequencies at resonance can easily pass whereas they were being quite strongly attenuated by the series tune circuit. Okay, that's um, looking at it in um, frequency in, in uh, time domain. Let's now reconfigure, and with this scope um, is capable of doing a bode plot. You may have watched previous videos and seen that. So I'm now going to reconfigure it um, for a bode plot, and let's um, see what kind of results we get. And we'll start first of all by going back to the uh, series tune circuit. I have the circuit reconfigured to be a series tune circuit once again and we're still feeding signal generator in at the top and bottom and we're taking the um, output um, for producing the bow plot from the from the same two points on the circuit so the wiring is essentially identical so I've just run the uh, span here with the signal generator connected directly to the scope just to make sure we've got some kind of normality so the pale blue um, line there that is the uh, amplitude and the darker blue line here is going to be the phase so you can see that it's reading zero phase with them um, uh, straight through and uh, just happens to be reading purely for reference purposes minus 16 dB there that is just arbitrary dB it isn't a specific measurement so now I've got the um, 
tune circuit connected up so let's now restart the run and see what happens it takes the scope a moment or two to just issue the commands to the signal generator to start tracking um, so there we go so what you've got going on here the jumping about is the scope will auto scale until um, it gets something where it can display um, both lines for you so amplitude is um, falling uh, there it appears to have leveled off and now it's starting to to climb again so we'll just let it complete its plot for a moment and then we'll look at uh, exactly what we've got okay i'll just turn the scan off no need to do that anymore so what we've got there is that's 100 kilohertz at the center of the screen so 130 kilohertz there so that's about 106 kilohertz as we saw earlier on the um, voltage display so for a series tune circuit then we've got the amplitude dropping um, bottoming off there and beginning to climb again either side of the resonant point of 106 kilohertz this plot goes from 70 to 130 and the blue line here is the phase of the input signal compared to the output signal and as you can see at resonance phase actually and um, this is the, the phase scale so um, zero is about halfway up that division there so as you can see at resonance um, phases angle is zero input compared to output so that's the plot of a series tune circuit now let's have a look at a parallel one okay i've rechecked um, the straight through reading so we're level at zero degrees and we've got a flat line for amplitude too so now the circuit's reconfigured as a parallel tune circuit so let's do exactly the same run as we did before and um, see what kind of results we get they should be um, uh, theoretically um, a sort of an inverse of what we um, saw with the series tune circuit so the scope is automatically scaling at the moment so we just give it a a minute or two to just um, sort out its its auto scaling so we start to get sensible looking plot and there we are passing through the resonant point at about 106 megahertz uh, kilohertz sorry and as you can see um, not surprisingly we've got that um, steady increase peaking off there and dropping down um, I'll stop that run now and once again there is zero to get minus five degrees that's 10 degrees so as you can see there zero phase angle is where we've reached resonance so for the series and the parallel tune circuit resonant frequency um, is the same for both because um, they're identical components phase angle is the same for both but the amplitude is actually the opposite and obviously there's some uh, uses here in terms of a filter whether it be a band pass filter to allow things to pass in this area or whether it be a band stop filter in the case of the series tune circuit to to reject um, certain frequencies there's clearly obvious uses in in circuits there for those um, for this tune circuit arrangement okay well you've seen there on the bench both the series and the parallel tune circuit and we've looked at the the plots in terms of voltage on this oscilloscope and then we've produced uh, two bowed plots so I'll just put them up here to my right to remind you um, exactly what we've got so at the top we have the series tune circuit where we've got that very pronounced dip as we pass through resonance and phase is at uh, angle is at zero degrees and uh, below there um, the parallel tune circuit which essentially is the opposite where at uh, resonance um, we've got again phase angle of zero degrees but a very different um, situation going on where the signal is able to pass so I hope that's made a bit of sense and um, you've perhaps uh, refreshed your memory or perhaps learned a bit you never know either way thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed it please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down comments are always welcome Be absolutely delighted if you could subscribe thanks very much for the comments that i have been getting uh, one of the main reasons i've kept going with the channel is because of the encouraging comments that i've got so thanks for that it really is appreciated i do eventually read them all uh, although it does sometimes uh, take a bit of time but hopefully um, you 
know from that that your feedback is making a difference. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next video.